everyone, so today I am bringing you a review of four different drugstore primers and kind of how they stack up against each other. Down below, if you look in the description box, I'll have a list of the ones that I mentioned, the prices and a link for all of them in case you're interested in a certain one. I will talk about skin types and you know how certain primers that might work really well for me will work differently if you have oily skin because I've kind of got combo, so it's right in between. So I will get into that, so let's go ahead and get started. And before you ask what I'm wearing on my lips, <laughs> I'm wearing this uh, Milani matte lipstick in matte kiss and it's just I mean these are around like five or six dollars at least at the store I buy them in um, they're amazing so just so you know all right so let's go ahead and go in order I'm gonna start with the primer that I liked the least I only own four drugstore primers I've owned a lot in my time but I declutter all the time like all the time and I recently got rid of like 70% of my makeup collection so this is what I kept one of them I kept just to show you, but I'm gonna get rid of after I after this video. Um, so that one that I like the least is this Wet n Wild one. This is the Wet n Wild Coverall Primer. Now, the first offense of this primer is its smell. It smells like Elmer's glue. Now, that's something I can get past, but I know that a lot of people that have really sensitive noses or they're just really sensitive to smells, this would really bother you. I mean, it's a very strong, pungent smell. But getting beyond that, um, the, you know, these are all the same kind of packaging where it's just a squeezy tube, and it's kind of a white formula that looks like Elmer's glue. Again, a lot of the primers are like this, so that doesn't bother me. But um, when you apply it, I just feel that it doesn't do anything. It, you blend it in, and um, you know, it, it's kind of more of a lotion-y primer. So if you have dry skin, you would think that this would be good for you because it's got more of a lotiony texture to it whereas some have more of a silicone texture to it um, and it feels kind of smooth but kind of sticky a little bit sticky literally parts of it it kind of feels like Elmer's glue in a way not as as much but still so you let it sit in your on your face for a while and when I put my foundation on it it just feel like it, it's it's pulling the primer with it like the primer's not staying put even if I let it sit for a few minutes and it just didn't make a difference. And for me, if I'm gonna take the time to actually put on a primer, and I don't wear primers every single day, but if I'm gonna take the time to actually put it on, it darn well better be doing something. Because if it's doing nothing, then I feel like I'm just adding more chemicals to my face, you know, just more nonsense that I don't need. Um, so for those reasons, this is the one I just wouldn't recommend. I know some people have had really good luck. I have a demo with this primer and the coverall foundation. I actually like the coverall foundation. I can link that entire demo and review of the whole really cheap wet and wild line below if you're interested, but not my favorite. Moving beyond that, my next one in line, so like this was like fourth place, this would be third place. This is the Maybelline Master Prime by iStudio Primer, and they have I think three different versions of this. This is the blur and smooth one, and it's in 100. Now this is a very, very similar texture to that where it's got a squeezy tube and it's again a white kind of lotion-y formula. This one doesn't really have a smell and it feels very, very similar. Now this one I would say performs very similarly to the Wet n Wild, but this one has a little bit more of a, now I don't want to say silicone, but kind of that slippery feel to it, but in a good way. The coverall one was a little bit sticky, but this one feels a little bit more slippery where it kind of does blur your pores nicely. So if you've got really enlarged pores, this is one that I think you would like, but this would be for the person that has dry skin and large pores. Like if you've got both of those, then I think you would like this a lot. Now I don't have very large pores, so that pore filling is not as big of a deal to me, at least not right now where my skin is. But it does a nice job. The only offense for this one is I don't feel like it holds on to your foundation that long. So again, I didn't feel like it made enough of a difference for me to make me want to use it in the mornings. I feel like with both of these, just wearing foundation on its own performs exactly the same as when I wear it with these. So that's kind of my two cents on these two. Now, my top two, they both perform differently, and so really they could be tied for number one when it comes to drugstore primers, but I'm gonna tell you what my favorite favorite is. This would be number two for me. This is the Maybelline Baby Skin, and this one is a very different texture than all the ones I'm mentioning in this video. This one is a true, like a clear primer. It's very, very 
poor filling. So if that is a huge issue for you, you would like this better than any of the ones I'm going to mention, including the number one one I'm going to mention. So if that's your main issue, you will like this a lot. Now this is one that when you apply it, you want to push it into your skin. Because of its formula, it can tend to almost disappear if you just buff it into your skin, but if you kind of press it where you need it, especially if you just need it here, you know, you don't have to put primer all over your face. So if you really only have trouble here and here in your T-zone and then your nose area, then just put it there. You know, you don't have to have it all the way out here in your cheeks, um, on your chin if you don't need it. This is really nice at blurring out your pores. I do think it helps hold on to your foundation longer because it's filling in your pores. So um, if you've got really oily skin, this is one you'd like as well because I feel like it kind of blocks those areas so the oil's not producing as much or at least it's not secreting through as easily. And so because it's blocking that, your foundation lasts longer. So that's how I would recommend using this one for that skin type anyway. My number one primer, and I'm gonna show you while I'm talking a demo of me applying this, this is the Rimmel Lasting Finish Primer. The reason I like this more than anything um, is because it it's again that white, lotion-y texture, but it not only feels moisturizing on my skin, especially since my skin can tend to be a little bit drying at times, but it lets my natural shine come through. And I don't mean like oily shine, I just mean like kind of a satiny look to my face. So it gives your skin a satin look, but it actually holds on to, onto the foundation all day. And it doesn't, I don't know. What I would say is that if you have oily skin, this might not be ideal because it does kind of keep your skin with that healthy glow. But it's not anything like crazy. Like I feel like some primers just don't work at all and so then you're just oily straight through it. I don't mean like that. I mean it kind of, it's like it controls the amount but it gives you a good amount. I don't know how else to explain it. I used it today and I just feel like it lasts all day. It makes my skin look healthy and glowy because that's my problem. The reason I don't like using primers every day is because I feel like so many of them just make my skin feel more dry. And I'm like, why would I want my skin to feel more dry and then put foundation on top of it that can just kind of make it worse, make it look worse anyway. So this would be my number one recommendation. But again, if you have really, really oily skin, I would say try the baby skin. I think you'd like that better. Or if you have really big pores. Other than that, the other two, I know, again, these aren't like the worst products in the world. A lot of people love these. It really depends on your skin. The good news here is that all of these are really inexpensive. All of these are under $10. So you can't, you know, you can't really go wrong with trying any of them. But that's my two cents on them. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Again, more info on all of these are below. If you're interested in more of my drugstore review and demo videos, I can link my playlist of all the ones I've done on foundations and just all kinds of things down below if you are interested. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe to catch more drugstore makeup videos, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!